students today we are talking about two different topics language acquisition versus language learning and nigaragon sign language when we talk about language acquisition we cannot forget noam chomsky he is an american linguistic and the proponent of theory of language acquisition watch a small video related to the theory of language acquisition So in order to begin, we're going to talk about the innatist theory of language acquisition, which most of you are probably familiar with it. The innatist theory states, or suggests rather, that, that language acquisition is inborn. It's, it's something that is not learned. It's like, like walking. You, we're, all, we're all both, I mean, we're all born with two legs. Now, unless you have a, a, a physical impediment, once those legs get enough, those, those muscles get enough strength to support your upper body, you can walk. And that's how they see the language acquisition process. It is innate. And to the innatist theorist, there's a language acquisition device that they suggest we have in our brain. Okay? Now, the way that they explain it is as follows. We have an LAD, a language acquisition device, in our brains that functions as a congenital device for language acquisition. And what it does is, it provides us with, with innate rules of language development. Kind of like the way that I like to look at it is, the brain, the brain has no choice, okay? When you expose anything to the brain, the brain has no choice but to process it. Kind of like your eyes, your eyes have no choice but to see what you're looking at. Kind of that's, that's the same way that this language acquisition device works. The brain processes what you expose to it. Now, examples of, of, or, or studies that kind of support this theory. Some time ago there was a case study done where deaf children, for reasons that we don't know, or at least my research, I, I, I don't know why, parents did not want them to learn any kind of sign language, okay? They were deaf. So these kids were grouped together and they themselves, without any formal training, any formal teaching, any formal education, they actually develop a manual set of communicating that closely mirror what we know today as, as a, a, ASL, American Sign Language. Now we're going to talk about the cognitive theory. The cognitive theory of language acquisition now sort of contradicts the, uh, the innatist, and it says that uh, language development is not innate, it's, it's developmental. And what they propose or what they suggest is that they're influenced by Piaget's stages of cognitive development. What this is, is a blueprint that basically tells you how students progress through four key stages of language development or cognitive development. And each stage is marked by shifts in how they process three things, thought, judgment, and knowledge. And as you can see, it goes all the way from sensory motor pre-operational, concrete operational, all the way to formal operational at the age of 12 years or older. Language is the primary form of communication that humans use. However, language is not something that is taught to children. A child will pick up his or her native language just by being around other people, mainly their families. This is called language acquisition. The child acquires language without any conscious thought or study. Now you can watch a lecture. It will clearly explain how language acquisition occur in humans. Language sets us apart. Other animals communicate, but they don't have anything approaching the sophisticated grammar of human languages. How is it that we learn to speak and think in language so easily? Young children become adept in a new language very quickly. Since the dawn of philosophy, thinkers have argued about whether or not we have innate ideas, whether we are born knowing things as Plato believed, or rather as John Locke and other empiricists argued, the mind is a blank slate on which experience writes. An American linguist, Noam Chomsky, gave a twist to this debate in the 1960s, by demonstrating that children learning to speak just don't have enough information to form the complex grammatical maneuvers that allow them to generate unlimited new and original sentences, yet they do so with ease. 
There's a poverty of stimulus. Something else must be going on. Chomsky's hypothesis was that there are inborn structures in our brain, what he called a language acquisition device, or LAD, which gives us a natural propensity to organize the spoken language that we hear in various grammatical ways. Without that, we couldn't get started as language learners. If he's right, language structure is hardwired as a kind of universal grammar. Our slates have been written on before we emerge from the womb. Linguistic distinguish between language acquisition and language learning. In their opinion, children acquire language through a subconscious process during which they are unaware of grammatical rules. This happens especially when they acquire their first language. They repeat what is said to them and get a feel for what is and what is not correct. In order to acquire language, they need a source of natural communication, which is usually the mother, father or the caregiver. Now you can watch uh, seven secrets of language learning. Hi, this is Steve Kaufman, founder of Link, and I'm going to speak to you about the secrets, the seven secrets to successful language learning. I have learned 11 languages, four of them since the age of 50. I'm working on my 12th, which is Korean. Um, I will tell you what works for me. You'll have to decide if this can work for you. The first secret to successful language learning is spend the time. When I study a language, I spend at least an hour a day trying to learn that language. And I know that it's going to take me months and months of continuous studying to learn the language. But when I say study, I don't mean sit in a classroom. I don't mean answer questions or drills or review grammar rules or review lists of words. What I mean is spend time with the language. Be with the language. So listen to the language or read things about that are written in the language or listen to songs that are sung in the language. Um, watch movies if you can. Uh, if you have friends who speak the language, spend time with them, even if most of the time you're just listening because you don't speak well enough to really say very much. Spend time with the language. That is the first secret. And I say at least an hour a day. And it's not difficult to do because nowadays we have these very convenient little listening devices like an iPod or an MP3 player which can carry vast libraries of interesting content that you can easily download from the internet or from wherever you want to find them. This is very different from many years ago. So when I say spend time with the language, the time you spend in the classroom almost doesn't count. What matters is how much time do you spend away from the classroom with the language. The classroom can be very important as a place for you to meet with your friends, to find stimulus from a teacher. But in the classroom, you're listening to the teacher half the time, or you're listening to your classmates, some of whom might be better than you, in which case you're afraid to speak up. Some of them are worse than you, and so you find it annoying to listen to them, perhaps. I know I do. But the important thing is, how much time do you spend with the language away from the classroom? Listening, reading, watching movies, listening to songs, talking to people. Spend that time with the language and do it month after month after month. And don't let too many days go by where you don't spend time with the language. And depending how difficult the language is, and that means how different it is from your native language or from a language you already speak, the amount of time required might be years. If you can only spend an hour a day, it could be six months to a year to two years. If you can spend three hours a day, then it might be less than a year but it does take time. There is no shortcut to fluency. So, 
My first secret, and it's, it's absolutely essential, if you're going to make any progress in language learning, spend time with the language. So that's secret number one. And I will continue on to the other six secrets. There's a total of seven secrets to successful language learning. Thank you for listening. Language learning, on the other hand, is the result of direct instruction in the roles of language. Language learning is not an age-appropriate activity for very young children as learning presupposes that learners have a conscious knowledge of the new language and talk and can talk about that knowledge. They usually have a basic knowledge of the grammar. From neuro-linguistic point of view, language acquisition and language learning are processed in two different ways in the brain. During early infancy, language processing during acquisition occurs in many areas of brain. Only over time it gradually develops. There are two areas in the brain, it uh, mainly functions, the Broca's area and Wernick's area. Broca's area which is situated in the left frontal cortex and is involved in the production of the patterns in vocal and sign language and the vernix area in the left temporal cortex that is primarily involved in language comprehension. The Broca's area is the one actively involved in language acquisition process whereas the vernix area is active in the language learning process. When we define language acquisition is based on the neuropsychological process, it is opposed to learning and is a subconscious process similar to that by which children acquire their first language. Hence language acquisition is an integral part of the unity of the language. Lang defining la when we define language learning, it is a conscious process. The, it is the product of either formal learning situation or a self-study program. Language acquisition is the manner of learning language by immersion. It provides the student with a practical knowledge of the language, whereas language learning focuses on providing theoretical knowledge of the language. In this case, the student might know all the proper grammar rules and the correct ways of sentence structuring, but might still lack the confidence to have a conversation with a native. Hence, as st stated by Stephen Krashen, Students who are taught in formal structured way will learn the language but never fully acquire it. Okay, just now we can see the comparison between language acquisition and language learning. By uh, its meaning, language acquisition uh, is picking up a language, uh, but language learning is studying a language. Then by focusing, language acquisition is practical knowledge, um, then learning is theoretical knowledge. It's, uh, method of language acquisition is uh, this unconscious and implicit, but language learning is conscious and explicit. Then situations, informal situations uh, also language acquisition occurs. Then in language learning, formal situations only language learning occurs. Then about grammar, it, uh, language acquisition does not use grammatical rules, but in language learning use grammatical rules properly. Next we are talking about Nicaraguan Sign Language. Nicaraguan Sign Language is a sign language largely spontaneously developed by deaf children in a number of schools in western Nicaragua in 1970s and 80s. It is a particular interest to the linguistics who study it because it offers a unique opportunity to study what they believe to be the birth of new language. Then before the 1970s there was a no deaf community in Nicaragua. Deaf people were largely isolated from each other and mostly used simple home sign systems and gestures to communicate with their family, uh, family members, friends and others. But uh, the, uh, the conditions necessary for a language to arise occurred in 1977 when a center for special education established a program initially attended by when a center for special education established a program initially attended by 50 deaf children. The number of students at the school in Managua neighborhood of San Jose grew to 100 by 1979. In 1980, a vocational school for deaf adolescents was opened in the area of Managua called Villa Libertad. By 1983, there were over 400 deaf students enrolled in the two schools. 
Initially, the language program emphasized spoken Spanish and lip reading and the use of signs by teachers was limited to finger spelling. The program achieved little success with most students for, uh, failing to grasp the concept of uh, Spanish words. The children remained linguistically disconnected from their teachers, but the schoolyard, the street and the school bus provided fertile ground for them to communicate with each other. By combining gestures and elements of their home sign systems, a pidgin like form and a creole like language rapidly emerged. They were creating their own language. Staff at the school unaware of the development of this new language. So the children's gesturing as mime and as failure to acquire Spanish. Unable to understand what the children are saying to each other, they asked for uh, outside help. In June 1986, the Nicaragua Ministry of Education contacted Jody Curl, an American Sign Language Linguist from MIT. As Curl and other researchers began to analyze the language, they noticed that the young children had taken the pidgin like form of older children to higher level of com com complexity with the verb agreement and other conventions of grammar. This more complex sign language is now known as idioma de sedin de Nicaragua means ISN. Then ISN linguistic language. ISN offers a rare opportunity to study the emergence of a new language. Before ISN studies the early development of languages, had focused on creoles, which developed from the mi mixture of two or more distinct com uh, communities of fluent speakers. In contrast, ISN was developed by a group of young people with only non-conventional home sign systems and gesture. Some linguistics, linguists uh, such as Judy Curl and R.J. Senkas see what happened in Managua as proof that language acquisition has hardwired inside the human brain. Nicaraguan Sign Language language is uh, unique in history. Stephen P. Spinger, author of the Language Instinct maintains, we have been able to see how it is that children, not adults, generate language and we have been able to record it happening in great scientific detail. And it is the only time that we actually seen a language being created out of thin air. Since 1990, the other researchers have begun to study and report on the development of this unique language and its community. While each has their own interpretation of the events leading to this language and its development, development since all agree that Phenomenon being studied is one of the richest sources of data on language emergence discovered to date. Now you can watch a video about Nicaraguan Sign Language. Nicaragua, Central America. Managua. Here, as in other places of the world, there are those who hardly have any language at all. Maria Noname, Mary No Name. Deaf since birth, she has been isolated all her life, both from the people who could help her and from others with her disability. Her friend, linguist Judy Kegel, understands the depth of her isolation. The two can communicate just a little, using simple and primitive gestures. The first time I met her, she was missing the ability to tell me who she was. She was missing the ability to tell me how old she was. She doesn't know her name. In order to tell me who she was, she had to take me home and show me the papers and pictures of her family. Um, we had to share a context. She can tell me things. I can show you a bit. She can tell me what happened to her father. Hmm. I asked her about her father dying, and she said three. Okay? What three meant was he was shot three times. I know this from working with the other deaf signer that she said he was shot in three places and that's how her father died, right? Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, but, but three is just not enough.
to give me access to the information that I would have needed had I not had prior knowledge about that. Papa. Papa. Okay. What she's saying is, I had a daughter that went away and got married, and that was it. She never came back. I had a son that went away, and I never heard from him again. You know, that's it. I'm alone. That's my life. She was language ready. Um, the problem was she didn't get access to language within that critical period. And that critical window for learning language in the way that we learned it is closed. This window for language remains open until we reach age seven. Then it slowly closes as we advance towards puberty. Before the 1980s, many deaf Nicaraguans were like Mary No Name. They never encountered the window for language because they never encountered others with their disability. But in 1980, after the Nicaraguan Revolution, the new government tried to enhance deaf people's lives. It brought deaf village children into Managua to end their isolation. Here, educators tried to teach them an existing sign language. The effort failed. The children showed little interest in learning a language forced upon them. Instead, they began communicating with each other in their own way. Judy Cagle was summoned from the United States to sort out the problem. I came down thinking wherever there were deaf people, there was a sign language, and that obviously there would be a, a full-blown sign language in full swing here in Nicaragua. And this, I said, well, you know, I, I can learn a bit of their sign language if that's what you want and, and work with you on learning it. They said, no, they don't have a sign language. They have, they have mimicas. They have mime gestures. And they pointed to a group of kids and said, we want to know what they're talking about. It turned out they were talking about a lot more than anyone dreamed possible. Kegel had arrived in Nicaragua shortly after the birth of a new language. Language needs company. Language needs a community. Language needs some sort of a trigger. And I think that, I think that trigger is, it's not so much that it needs a community in the sense that there have to be lots of people, but a part of being a community is wanting to share information with each other. Might this moment resemble what happened around 50,000 years ago? The turning point that led to the explosion of human creativity? Language does not need a voice. It is our legacy an inevitability of being human. Today, we still don't know exactly when language evolved, when it opened the door to our phenomenal success as a species. This is a verb reduplicated... But language, every language, depends on strict rules all of them familiar. That's a roll shift to looking at man looking at the bird, then back to the man falling off the mountain, have dreaming that he's going to fly like a bird. While many species can communicate, even vocalize, only human languages are driven by complex rules. Every one of our world's 6,300 languages has them. We call them syntax. In her isolation, Mary No Name never encountered syntax, but it is commonplace in the children's language. Syntax isn't the set of rules that you learned in your third grade grammar that you had to memorize so you spoke English the way you're supposed to. Syntax is, or language, the constraints on language are something that all human beings share. They're the constraints that are imparted to us by the fact that we share a single human brain. They are the 
not just the constraints, but the ability to hierarchically organize information that allows us to construct sentences, novel sentences that have never been said before, that allows us to, put, to, to tell a story, that allows us to prophecy, that allows us to lie. I can surely communicate for communication's sake when I have syntax. Then I can truly use a language. Those most gifted with the tools of language might have been the ones to prosper. When we wind up this episode, once more we shall go through the topics language learning and language acquisition and Nicaraguan sign language. Language acquisition refers to the process of natural assimilation involving intuition and subconscious process of learning. It is the act of internalizing language to which you have been exposed with, with the deliberate memorization of a word and its definition. It is the product of real interaction between people in the environment, the target language and culture, where the learner is an active player. Language learning is a conscious activity, it's, it is not communicative. It is the result of direct instruction in the rules of language. Language attention is focused on the language in its written form and the objective is for the student to understand the structure and rules of the language whose uh, parts are discussed and analyzed. The emergence of Na Nicaraguan sign language provided the researchers with a rare opportunity to watch a new language developed complete with an extensive vocabulary and grammar rules. 